Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. And, uh, you know, we've been having a lot of guests lately and doing different things, and what I really wanted to do today, because I'm getting so many emails on this subject, is just a California new red wines. People are really asking for some of the blogs to be, hey, can you taste five to seven wines and just review them, grab a mixed bag. And that's what we've done. I've asked uh, five of the different wine consultants to grab a bottle of each of different things to feature, and this is what they brought, and I'm going to taste them. I've got one Pinot. Three cabs, one's actually a Cab Merlot blend, and one Petit Syrah. And so without further ado, let's just get right into it. I'll give you a little story about each winery and things of that nature. So, the first wine is Bad Fish, Pinot Noir Reserve. This is the uh, 2004 vintage from Monterey. And let's see what we think. This is kind of an interesting story. This wine I discovered, I haven't seen it in a lot of places, and I discovered when I was in, in a trip to Chicago at, a, and at one of the major wine retailers there, a real big store. I popped in, saw the label, did some homework on it, found the winery, got a, got a sample, and was really blown away with the 03 version of this. And again, this is the reserve. We did carry the uh, regular Pinot Noir during the holidays, had a huge success. This just came in. So let's see what happens. I mean, I think you'll tell right away that the color is extremely dark for Pinot Noir. I mean, almost like Petit Syrah in color. These wines have all been open for about an hour and a half. Not the greatest name for a wine, Bad Fish. Doesn't make you, you know, appealing to the, to the palate, but we'll see. Great nose. I mean, very concentrated, very dark fruit for Pinot Noir. Plenty of a uh, licorice kind of a, uh, what is that? It's like a hint of cinnamon as well. Pretty, pretty exotic. Great complexity. Actually, actually this is probably the best bottle of this wine I've had. I think for the tasting notes on the website, I scored it an 89. I've had a bottle where I thought it was an 88. This is even closer to a 90 point Pinot Noir. And again, this is an inexpensive wine. I like this wine. Small winery. Really, really under the radar. Only a couple places in the country have carried it. This is great stuff. If you're looking for an entry level Pinot Noir, this is definitely something you should try. But be rest assured, this is higher concentrated, more complex than that Agostino we did with the Chilean one. So if you found that one being too light, this is maybe something you'd like to try. This is great. It has a lot of Kind of a, a a meaty kind of meaty finish. This is nice. A lot of fruit. Real nice wine. Really good. Bogle, 2003, California Cabernet. Always uh, one of our most popular sellers. I've always liked the wines from Bogle. I've always thought they've been tremendous values. Let's see what the O3 Cab's doing. I'm not sure I've had a Bogle Cab in a long time. One of those wines that you become used to the quality and, and in a light, inexpensive price point, you don't really taste every year when it becomes this big of a brand. Good color, really dark. Kind of like charred fruit sn smell, kind of a little bit of strawberry, a little bit of uh, cedar wood. I'm going to get really hammered for this on the floor on Saturday because it's a very popular wine and one that we've recommended in the past, but I'm not feeling this effort. I find the tannins to be really, really, it's a really bitter tannic flavor on the finish, which really has thrown me off. The fruit's nice. The upfront part of this wine is really interesting, but it's funny. First 50% of this wine is really interesting, really intense, and then it kind of falls apart. Not for me. Kind of like an 87 point wine. This just came in. Lunata. Cabernet, 68%. 32% Merlot, 2002 from Sonoma. Now, the first thing that strikes me on this is it's 16% alcohol, which is very high for this varietal. So I'm a little bit worried about the, uh, the heat. I hope it's not too hot on the palate. We'll see what happens. Again, 
California is a great area. Obviously, it's America's number one area for wine. It's something that I'm getting emails, hundreds of emails out of all of the emails. It's always, can you do some more California wines? Can you taste more California wines? I'm looking for a different California wine. So we'll be doing this, and then we've got a lot of other recommended things. Keep them coming, the comments and emails, and I will get it to the show, so we'll do that. This nose is, wow, this is great, the nose. Very, uh, very interesting. I'm going to give you a really interesting uh, imaginary blend here. Imagine um, asparagus filled with vanilla. That's what you're getting on the snows. A little green, but also a lot of the vanilla I think you get from the oak. It is a little hot. It's a tad hot. Wow, this is a nice, big, complex wine. I really enjoy it. The finish, just a little bit. You know, the Vogel finish is bitter and has dry, bitter tannins. This has fruit, really elegant fruit, but I do taste a little bit of the alcohol on the finish. Other than that, this would be like a 90-point wine. This is really well-made, really fun. It's a great Meritage, which is a blend. 68 cab, 32 Merlot. I like it. This is the kind of wine I would definitely have a case around the house for guests or for pizza or for just watching the game. It gives me the kind of fruit and the complexity I enjoy in red wine, especially from California. There's a little heat because of the 16% alcohol, but it's very subtle. I'm not even sure you would even taste it. It's just something that I, I, I get used to, but not bad at all. Franciscan, 2003, Cabernet. Napa Valley Cab, always one of my favorites. I love Franciscan's wines. They're one of my favorite wineries. I always feel that under 20 bucks, they're some of the best California cabs. I've not had the 03 yet. I was a huge fan of 02 and 01. 03 should be great. It's always got ripe black currant. Yeah, the nose is very solid. It's got a lot of fruit. Again, you get that cedar and Asian spice. Classic Cabernet. If this was blind, I'd peg it. I'd be proud of myself. Oh, okay. Not as great as I thought it was going to be. Um, very dry. Wow, give me one sec. Yeah. It got a little dry on them. It's hiding a lot of that fruit. On the finish, it's extremely dry. And again, you're getting that bitter tannic instead of that fruit tannic. And that's what's giving it a non-silky finish. And that's what you're looking for. And again, really the Lunata, why it, even the alcohol is not bothering is the finish here is silky smooth. On this Franciscan, it's really nice. It's got a great nose. It's got a great bouquet. The palate, it, it, it's, it's fruity. It's, it's rich. But on the finish, it kind of falls apart. In the mid palate, which is kind of the taste in between when you first taste it and when you last taste it, is really awkward and just out of balance. I'm really surprised. I'm, I'm disappointed with this effort. I, I would go 88, somewhere in that range. 87. That's too bad. 2003, Gerard Petit Syrah. Great score in the Wine Spectator. 90 points. I hope you can see this. This is crazy. Wow. This is pitch black purple. I mean, this is what you, you may want to paint your walls with this. This is incredible color. Petit Syrah, great grape. You know, you see a lot of Syrahs, but the Petit Syrah is just a really great California red wine. Wow, one of the first wines I've ever fallen in love with was 91 Stag's Leap Petit Syrah. I've been a Petit Syrah fan since. If you've never had one, that's right, go out and try it. This has amazing flavor, wow. I wish you could try this. This is crazy. This is 
very exotic vanilla, kind of caramel, a little bit of red and black fruit mixed in, blueberry. It's almost like a fruit salad. It's really great on the nose. I'm really excited to try this. Holy cow. This is real stuff. Extremely rich, extremely complex, tons of, tons of fruit flavors going on in the palate. I'm still tasting this wine. A really um, obvious flavor of coffee, cherries, mocha. Wow. This is a monumental effort, and I believe this is under 20 bucks. This is something everybody should try. This is sensational. Wow. Extraordinary. All right. Let's round it up. Gerard, first place, 92 points. Easy. It, it's incredible. Best wine by spades. Just unbelievable. Let's go, um, let's, let's go a tie for second. With these two characters, the Lunata and the Bad Fish, I call them 89 point wines. Um, both have the potential to be 90 with a little bit of cellaring. These are kind of wines at these price points that you definitely want to have around the house for the summer um, and into the winter. The Pinot Noir can drink all year long. This might be a little bit big for right now, but wait till you try it. If you like Cabernets at this price range, you've got to try it. Mean, to compare this to the Bogo, for example, no comparison. Um, 89s. Let's go right here. We'll go 87. You know, yeah. We're going to go 87 on the uh, Franciscan and um, 85 on the Bogle. I mean, a nice wine. Again, under 10 bucks. So, what can, you know, let's, we're not killing it. But by, by leaps and bounds, Gerard, Badfish, and Lunata outshine the other two. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Keep the comments coming. If you want to see any kind of episode, let me know. Just email me. I'll email you back. We'll see you next time on Wine Library TV.